All right, so let's add some excitement to this. So I'm going to drop in a new object. I'm going to have a geometry. I'm going to call this car. And in this, I'm going to drop down a Lembic. And I'm going to point to this police car I have, which is massive, by the way. So I'm going to shrink it down with a transform. And I'm going to do it quite a bit. So it's going to be 0 0.0.0.01. So there we go, and now it's, it's tiny, but if we look at the zombies, it looks kind of right. Sweet. Okay, now I'm going to add some animation to this, so I'm going to drag it out here. So the idea is, he's waiting, he sees the zombies, they're turning around, and then he just start driving and drive right through them. So let's wait until they all turned around. So around here, yeah, so around there, and I'm going to add a keyframe, and then I'm going to add a keyframe at the end. And I want him to pass them like over here somewhere. So now he starts, and he like, he just drives through them. Cool. Okay, so now we have this object. I want this to be a collider in the simulation. Uh, at the moment, it's all these different packed Olympics. So I just want to prepare it and make it a bit easier for the simulation to digest. So I am going to first unpack. So by unpacking, I have now vertices and polysoups, and that is fine. And then I'm going to do a VDB from polygons. And then I get this very rough surface. That's okay. I don't think we need to be that accurate. So I have this. Now I just want to convert it back to polygons again. So I'm going to have a convert VDB. And now we have it as polygon. We can see that if we go to wires. Oh, actually we don't have it right now. It's just converting it to volume. So let's change this to polygons. And now we can see we have we have some polygons here. And then you can set the adaptivity here if you want it to be more coarse. So maybe like that. And uh, then I don't want this to be happening on each frame because that would be a waste of time. So let's just do it on the first frame. So I'm going to have a time shift here. And I'm going to set this to F start. That means now it sets the time. So the time is always first frame so you can see it doesn't calculate on each frame anymore and uh, but then obviously we also lose the animation and we want the animation and then we can just attach it to the old geometry again by using a point deform so like this so in the point deform you have first you put the geometry that you want to deform then you want to have the rest points so the rest points we don't want them to move so I'm going to copy this time shift again and I'm going to put that after the unpack, and then I'm just going to plug that in. So that says, okay, so however it is on this frame, I want the relationship between the points to be the same on every frame. So then we can just connect this to the unpack. Now, like magic, we have this attached to this animation. Sweet. Okay, so this is what we want. So now I can just drop down a null. I can call this out collision geo. And I'll make it black. And then let's add the magic into the simulation. So I'm going to go into the crowd sim. Uh, here on the collisions, I'm going to add a static object. And I'm going to connect this. And then I'm going to point to our object. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go into the car and our collision geo. So now by doing that, we're going to have the car in the simulation. But this is actually kind of deceiving because this is not what the actual collision geometry is going to look like. Because Bullet is going to create its own collision geometry. So if I just go and hide so I don't see the outside geometry. And then in here I can go down to Bullet Data and show Guide Geometry. And this is the actual geometry. You can see the geometry is very coarse. In this case I don't think it really matters. So I'm actually quite happy with this. So I'm just going to leave it like this. 
So after watching this, I realized I have to add something to this collision stuff. So how I've done it currently, and uh, with the collision geometry like this, I actually don't have to go through all the steps I've done, because in this case, I'm just using convex hull. I could just do convex, and I can add this, and then I have a convex hull that looks exactly like that one, and then I just attach that to the pointer form. And then you don't need to do these. But the reason why I did it this way is because often you need more accurate collisions. So by having this B2B stuff, I can do other operations to it. Let's, I'm just going to uncut this. Oops. So by having it like this, I could do other operations. Like for example, I could do the old way of doing stuff is doing a Voronoi. And I have like a Voronoi and I attach that and then I have some scatter here. And then I have maybe 20 pieces. And if I do an explode you, now you see I have all these pieces. And then I can do a convex hull on each piece to get it closer to the real surface. So if I would connect this to the deform instead, and then let's go out to the crowd sim, and then we have this checkbox, create convex hull per set of connected primitives. So if I check that, you can see now we get something that more closely resembles that surface. And an even better way is to go in, I'm going to delete these guys again. And then you can use this convex decomposition. This basically breaks the objects down in smaller and smaller pieces with this slider. So the more I drag it down, the more pieces I'm going to have. So you can see, oh, let's look at the node. At first, I just have this very rough convex hull. And then I go down, and then now you're going to see it starts breaking up into smaller pieces. Then we get closer and closer to the actual surface. So here we can see we have something that is much closer. So if I would go into the crowd sim, now it's pretty good. Instead of just having it like this, then you get this. And that is obviously better. So that's why I did this in that way. But like I said, if you just want to have a convex surface, you could just use that convex node, and then you don't have to do this VDB polygon stuff. So I have just this car. Now I want it to collide with these guys. But just by default, nothing's going to happen. He's just going to drive through them. So he's going to go here, and then you're going to, you can see he's actually not even moving. And why is that? That is just because by default, it just reads one frame, but we want to use this use deforming geometry. So we're going to check that again, and now at least we're going to have it moving. You can see it's much slower now. And let's see, it should start moving soon. So here it comes. But as you might have guessed, nothing will happen. All right, so let's change that. So let's go to the start again. And first of all, of course, we need a trigger. So I'm going to go and have a crowd trigger. And on this crowd trigger, I'm not going to have it as objects bound anymore. I'm going to have this as RBD impact data. So that means when the car hits them, if it hits them hard enough, they're going to trigger into ragdoll. Here you need to specify a DOP impact object, and that would be this static object. So now let's point to that one. And uh, then we need to have a transition. And we want that from a walk to a ragdoll. And then let's connect this and see if something happens now. And still nothing. That is very disappointing. But it's not very hard to fix. So the reason why it is like this is that by default, you can see these nodes, if we go up to RBD regal, is set to ignore. So that means that the state is just ignoring that there is a bullet simulation at all. And like compared to a ragdoll, you have it as active. And that means that it's only care about the bullet simulation. But we want something in between. We want it to be outside the ragdoll simulation. But at the same time, we want it to be registered within it, if it makes sense. So we can go to idle, or we don't need to go to idle, actually. We need, just need to go to the walk. And in the walk, we can go to this RBD ragdoll and set this to animated static. By doing this, now it's going to register an impact. It also got to save all the velocities when it gets triggered and uh, it should work. So let's see if I'm right or if I'm just lying to you. 
So let's play it again. I'm just going to go to this frame here. Oh, this is not enough. So let's go to the end. So it looks like it works. Let's see. So here comes the car and we can see it drives over these guys and they get triggered. Look here. Woohoo! Brilliant. Great. Okay, so let's just do one more thing before we start to render this.